Hey guys, today's vlog is going to be about maintaining and developing an app for the long term. This is something I believe a lot of developers are not involved with. They may build something and then walk away or they may be dropped into something and work on it for a short period of time. But let's talk about developing an app for the long term where you first conceive of the idea of your app. And I'm going to talk about web apps, but it goes with any type of app really. So you first come up with the big idea and you start the implementation of that idea. So you put it out there, you build your app, and if you're a smart developer, you put it out there very quickly. Minimum viable product, as they say in the startup community. Of course, any entrepreneur with any experience going back, you know, me, it's you know, 25, 30 years ago, will tell you, MVP, minimum viable product, is the new buzzword used in the startup community, but any experienced business person will know that that's how you get a product out as quickly and as cheaply as possible to see whether or not it's going to work. So you get your product out and lo and behold, you find out, you know what, there's something here. We're getting some interest. We're getting a couple of clients. People are signing up. But what you're also going to find out is that you're going to have a lot of work to do in terms of refinement. So you, you find out that your core idea, this is a success, your core idea for your app is actually viable. It works. But what you're going to find out is that all kinds of things about it need to be changed, updated, replaced, etc., etc. So as the lifespan of your app, your service uh, continues, as it continues to develop, what you're going to likely be doing is removing features on a regular basis, adding new features, refining features. There's going to be a lot of work in terms of UX and maybe UI as well, but UX, user experience, in terms of how the app flows. So you have to have in place from the get-go a very light wake, a very lightweight UX framework, something that is not bound and not hard to update. So that's a key thing about that. You have to expect you're going to be making many, many changes because as your users start using your app or your service, they're going to give you valuable feedback and you're going to find out all the things that were wrong. And I've been through this process a few times in my career with my own apps where that exactly, this exactly happened. It didn't happen just once, it happened three, four times. So I can tell you from experience that this is the way it goes. It's a constant process of refinement. It's a constant process of being willing to forego, let go of ideas that you thought were great, and then adopting new ideas based on a consensus view from your user base. You have to be careful to not jump every time a user would like something. If you do that, it's going to be like a Homer mobile, meaning you're going to have an app with so many features and it's going to be such a mess that nobody's going to want to use it. But if you find you're getting consensus from several of your users, especially important users, then you can make those wise decisions about what to implement and when. So a big part of this process is to have somebody at the helm, if you will, somebody who's not deep in the code but understands code, an architect, somebody who can step back and look at the big picture. This is a very important thing. When you don't have somebody at the helm, that captain steering that ship, steering the development of your app ship, it's going to go all over the place. It's going to be a mess. I can tell you that from experience. So when you first develop your app and you get it out there and you get good reaction from people and it starts building and when you can, you got to if you can, you have to extricate yourself from the daily, daily coding because the daily coding makes you very myopic, like a horse with the blinders. And it's going to be hard for you to see that big picture and to be able to look at it dispassionately. And I think that's one of the reasons why Steve Jobs was very effective with his product development because he wasn't a coder and he had just a superficial understanding of the technology. But as a result of that, he was able to look at the product with non-nerd eyes. He was able to look at it from a user who was not a nerd because when you're a nerd or you're deep in the code, you're deep into the, the engineering of an app, you kind of lose touch with 
that ease of use aspect. Or, you know, you kind of lose touch with uh, the app from the point of view of the user, and you get into it too deep, and you're and you're you're uh, you're not a good judge about what will make the app good from the user's point of view. So. Again, that's why it's important that you as a product owner, you have to detach yourself from the development process. I mean, getting deep into the code. Once in a while, I will do it just to make sure everything is cool. Uh, and there's a balance there to be had, I suppose. But at the end of the day, it's been super valuable for me to pull back and just concentrate in terms of user point of view. And also general architecture, because when you start understanding how your users are going to use your app. And if you understand code, you understand architecture, you will be able to predict uh, more accurately how the main infrastructure of your app will have to be developed in terms of database structures, in terms of ORM layers and so forth, based on how you see or how you perceive the app will be used in the future by, uh, well, by the users. All right, I hope this is, uh, makes some sense to you guys. This is a high-level coders a vlog, if you will, where I'm leaning on, you know, I've been doing this since the 90s, so I'm giving you some insight here in terms of what I've learned over the last you know, two, over two decades, I guess. And it's not just my own experience, the experience of many of my friends and, uh, and uh, so people I know and people I've met. And even people, I, you know, for instance, I first experienced, well, not first, but I, I remember speaking to somebody at a wedding who happened to work at Microsoft, and he was one of the programmers on the Word project, Microsoft Word. And he was telling me about what they were doing internally. It was really interesting because Word is such a huge program. And I was asking him, you know, why is Word, you know, 2000, you know, five times the size as Word 1995, even though the features and the f capabilities of the app are, you know, pretty similar. And he got into all that, and he was telling me about how these things were developed. It's fascinating to hear these stories. But I'm going to have to leave that to another vlog, if people ask for it. All right, bye-bye.